Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Now I haven't really been able to play RuneScape very much this week because the servers are very bad and it's hard to play. So today I thought I would have a look at Jagex as a company and look at some of the other games that they have produced. It's pretty easy to forget that Jagex is actually a game development company and theoretically they should be producing uh, many different games throughout different genres. But that is just not the case, they have had no success on any other game except for RuneScape and Old School RuneScape, but they have been trying, they have produced many different games, so today I thought I would have a look at them and try to answer the question of why Jagex has no success developing any other games and if they will ever have any in the future. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and let's get started. Now I want to start off by looking at the Jagex games that got the furthest into development because I think they'll have the most to show us about Jagex as a company. Now what does any game company do that has one flagship popular game? Well of course they are going to make a spin-off version of it. And Jagex is no different, they did attempt the RuneScape spin-off at two separate times actually. The first one I want to talk about is RuneScape Idle Adventure. RuneScape Idle Adventure was a spin-off version of RuneScape that was originally announced back in February of 2016. RuneScape Idle Adventure was in the idle game genre, which if you don't know is a very popular genre within mobile gaming, which generally have game mechanics that require the player to be minimally active in the actual game. You'll have to make very small micro decisions, and then you'll generally have to wait a long amount of real life time before you can accomplish your goals. Now RuneScape Idle Adventure was very similar and a pretty generic game as far as most people were concerned. The game went into early access September of 2016 and within about six months Hyperhippo which was the game developers announced that they would cease development of the game and the game would be shutting down. The game overall had fairly poor reviews and the game was shut down due to a lack of interest. Now the other RuneScape related game was a game called Chronicle RuneScape Legends and it was a turn-based strategy card game, very similar to a game like Hearthstone. And unlike RuneScape Idle Adventure, this game actually did get a full release. There was a beta that was released in November of 2015, but then subsequently it had an official release on Steam on the 26th of May 2016. Now, this game was actually fairly well reviewed. A lot of people actually liked Chronicle RuneScape Legends. However, once again, it suffered from extremely low player counts. Using the Wayback Machine, we can see that the peak player count for this game on Steam was 2.8 thousand which is very very low and that was right at the beginning and it pretty much immediately dropped off after that into the double digit player counts now once again this game was kind of a generic knockoff of other games in the genre it looked quite a bit like hearthstone obviously shared a lot of the same mechanics and that's not to say that someone can't make another game similar to hearthstone but it did seem to fill the same kind of style and obviously was just an inferior product with infinitely less resources behind it devs and really passion for creating a new game this game was actually around for about two years, but on May 8th of 2018, it was announced that the game would be removed due to multiple technical issues combined with a dwindling player base, and pretty much abandoned it back in August of 2018. Now, beyond RuneScape itself, the longest standing game that Jagex has ever developed and hosted is actually a gaming website called FunOrb. Now a lot of people in the RuneScape community know about FunOrb, although it wasn't particularly popular. FunOrb was a casual gaming site with a bunch of different games that were all developed in Java. It was originally launched back in 2008 and actually had some games that were beloved by a lot of people. Although none of these games were particularly popular as far as AAA games go, some of the more popular games on FunOrb were Arcanist, Army of Gilinors, and Void Hunters. Fun Orb kind of reminded me of mini clips almost. They were meant to be for fun with no meaningful progression or anything like that. And surprisingly, Fun Orb actually lasted for 10 years, which is outlasting pretty much any other game beyond RuneScape. However, on May 9th of 2018, Jagex announced that Fun Orb would actually be closing, stating that advancements in software and hardware have made it increasingly difficult to access and play the game. Uh, interestingly enough, Fun Orb was actually not really compatible with any of the new browsers, so pretty much workarounds had to be made to actually access the games. But that really just goes to show that people actually cared about these games because they found ways to circumvent the software limitations to play it anyway. Now the active player base when this was shut down was probably very very low because there hadn't been any meaningful updates in years, and they certainly weren't making a lot of money from Fun Orb. While there was a paid version of the game and advertisements, it would clearly never be a cash cow like any of the other potential games they were developing, which is too bad because these games were actually quite a lot of fun. Now one game that not a lot of players ended up playing was one called Eight Realms. 
It was a browser-based real-time strategy game developed by Jagex. And I gotta say, even for the time, which was about 10 years ago, this game looked pretty dated. It was a browser-based game which long had gone out of fashion and was kind of just a weak attempt to get into another gaming genre. To be fair, I never played it, but I don't really know anyone who actually did. Eight Realms had a closed beta that was released on May 5th of 2011. However, it was shut down about a year and a half later, citing that it had only met 10% of their sales target. They stated that, We have decided to withdraw Eight Realms from the market on July 1st for a number of reasons. Chief amongst those was to focus sharply on our three priorities for the year, namely continuing to grow RuneScape, developing a great Transformers MMO. <laughs> and the launch of another game that is currently a closely guarded secret. Now the final game I want to talk about here is one that's actually still available to play, and it's one called Block and Load. Now this game was not originally developed by Jagex, but it was acquired from another game company, and it's kind of a sandbox first person shooter game, and is a successor to another developed game called Ace of Spades. Now once again we can look at the player accounts on the Steam website, and they are pretty low, however this is definitely one of the more successful games they've developed, and a lot of people do seem to like it and is very highly rated. It had an all-time player peak of 8,500, which honestly isn't too bad for an indie game like this, but it has been losing popularity and most likely is going to get shut down sometime in the future. Now those are some games that Jagex has developed, others they have been part of publishing, and yet there's been other games that have been cancelled altogether. We have games like Transformers Universe, which never made it to beta, uh, Stellar Dawn, which never made it to beta, and there are even smaller, random indie games that Jagex has had a part of publishing. And that kind of brings me back to my original question, and that is why has Jagex failed at developing pretty much any other game beyond RuneScape? And I think we can use these old examples to maybe prove why. And I think one of the chief reasons here is that most of their games are either pretty much direct copies of other games on the market, or just very niche indie games. Jagex started as an indie game developer, I guess you could call them, but they grew into a massive company, but for some reason they still have the mindset of an indie developer. Like, even for the time, a lot of these games are fairly out of date graphic-wise, gameplay-wise. They're just old ideas attempting to be repurposed. Another really big reason is that all of the developers at Jagex, the ones working on RuneScape at least, are all working on an out-of-date coding language. I believe it is called RuneScript, which is not that applicable to any other game development, which means that most of the employees are going to be out of date on developing on any modern scripting language, which is severely going to limit their ability to develop modern games. Another huge problem is that Jagex seems very hesitant to reinvest their profits into uh, developing games, into paying their employees correctly, into expanding their horizons, they are just pretty much focused on the RuneScape IP. And like I said earlier, Jagex seems to kind of parade around as an indie company basically, always complaining that they don't have enough resources, not enough devs, not enough money to manage the servers correctly or whatnot, but they are not an indie company. They make a lot of money, they should be able to develop new games, they should be able to pay their employees correctly, like most other companies do. Every year, most companies are required to publish their financials, some sort of fiscal report. In 2018, Jagex generated 92 million pounds, but the shocking thing here is their profit margin is at over 50%. Now this kind of stems from the RuneScape game being $11 a month, which is already kind of high as far as modern AAA games are. That's over $100 every year for a game. But on top of that, the development costs can be very low. For a game like Old School RuneScape, which is using a very out-of-date graphic style, developing new content is probably dirt cheap compared to how much new games need to invest to stay up to date with the new graphical advancements and technological advancements. Now the final thing I wanted to mention is that Jagex as a company has been bought and sold a few times. Right now it's owned by a Chinese investment company, which had to later change its name to Offload Debt. Right now as far as I'm aware it's called Fukong Interactive Entertainment. And unfortunately, a company like that is most likely just interested in maximizing their profit with the least amount of investment possible, which means that Jagex is not very likely to invest a large amount of resources, a large amount of money into developing a new game. Hell, they're not even investing enough money into their mainstay game, RuneScape and Old School RuneScape, so it's very unlikely they will develop a modern game, a new successful game, or potentially even any game in the future. Anyway guys, that is going to be it for today's video. Let me know what you think. I really did have fun researching a lot of these old Jagex games, and honestly, some of them were fun. I'm not saying that Jagex as a company is a terrible game developer. They just have maybe a few more issues than average. 
anyway thanks for watching guys and i will see you next time